Welcome back. We're joined by the Sheffield United women's team manager. Very successful they've been too in the last season and very much a promising outlook ahead. Carl Award. Lance Hardy is going with uh, England uh, with the BBC. Uh, he's a freelance producer. Will be at the England camp uh, in Nice. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, spelled uh, pronounced see what differently. You, see what you did. See what I did there. No, it, it was <laughs> unintentional. <laughs> totally unintentional. Um, in the south of France, uh, you are not well. You, you you go to exotic places like Augusta, Georgia. I'm going to be here for most of the summer, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Not necessarily necessarily in here. I don't think we're going to do a show next week. I'm just waiting to see if anybody's on my hit list will say okay. yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. James, uh, you've got everything else to round up, but just before the break, we were talking about the seven successive victories of yeah, brilliant. the Sheffield United ladies, and one player in particular, Jade Pennock, you just started to talk about it, because I'd seen her in your 4-1 victory over Aston Villa, yep. and was blown away by her, her performance. Uh, tell us more about her. We, um, she was one of the first people we looked to sign, actually. She, um, she went under the radar a little bit. She'd come back from America. She had a, she had a couple of injuries. She signed for Donny Bells um, last season, but was a bit part player off the bench. But the glimpses we saw were brilliant. And um, she was somebody that I trained with, actually, when I was playing at Sheffield FC a few years ago. And um, there was always something about her I quite liked. But for, for us this season, she's been unbelievable. We've played her everywhere everywhere you know sometimes i say pull her to she laughs actually if i pull her to one side she knows what's coming you, you're probably playing out of position this week but um you know when we had all the injuries we played a right back left back right wing left wing center midfield center forward brilliant i think the only place she's not played is um in goal or center half well, she was wide midfield when i saw her that yeah. day and, and where's the best position then out wide yeah she's That's devastating yeah she's got yeah. bags of pace and do you know what though her all-round attitude is is unbelievable and she epitomizes everything you would want in a player mm. um, the work rate the girl puts in is unbelievable but um, she's a she's a nice girl with it and a good question on Twitter from somebody uh, just uh, querying the fact that you've, you've had uh, low knees from Manchester mm. United and wondering whether you know you're going to be trying to bring those back or what the situation <laughs> is on on that score we are currently in discussions with many targets for next season. Right, so a, that's the straightest bat, isn't it? It is, that is. That it really it, yeah. is. It's it with a knowing glance as well, yeah. yeah. I knew what was coming. I saw him actually uh, post it earlier and I Did thought... Did you? I didn't reply to it. I've been too busy. I've yeah, no, to be honest, a lot of people have asked us... Yes, yeah, so we, we make no secret. They're good players and, um, you know, they've, they've had a successful spell here and... You know, we'll, we'll do what we can to try and keep them and let's see. Then OK, well, there's the answer then. Yeah. We've got there in the end, haven't we? <laughs> An attempt will be made. But, you know, on the back of what you've achieved, the promise that you're showing, that will, will help you entice players, yeah, I'm sure, will, won't it? Attracts players, won't it? They'll think, wow, they're, you know, they're, they're flying. Yeah, you'd hope so. And like I said earlier, you know, when you've got the, when you've got the facilities and the girls walk through that environment, they, um, it's an easy, easier sell. So, yeah, tomorrow morning we've got four or five players coming through the door, so we'll, uh, we'll be looking at that and, and mm. making sure they see what it's all about. Okay, nice. well, you're showing round, wooing kind of thing, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't need to woo, you yeah. just need to show them what's there. Just, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, Lance, also an author. Uh, we're just breaking into the chat about the, the women's mm. football scene. Uh, but um, you principally have written about Sunderland. Mm. And I know that when we get off air tonight, we'll be pursuing. I hope I, so. I tell you what. We're, we're down near. We're not far away from Sheffield St Midland Train Station, station yeah. and the, the the watering hole that we usually use uh, on a Thursday <laughs> never shows football <laughs> on TV, even if it's yeah, Manchester United it's or Liverpool. So there's no chance that Portsmouth Sunderland's going to be on the box. So if anybody knows, <laughs> sort of within sort of uh, let's say at three three hundred four hundred yards of the showroom cinema somewhere yeah. in that sort of area, a uh, pub that is likely to be showing even. A League One uh, Play second leg yeah. playoff game between Portsmouth and Sunderland. Tech, uh, no tech, text, tweet. I've got to get this terminology right. You do, yeah. Come tweet. on, get down with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I'm still wearing socks, so I haven't quite managed it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, socks, socks, socks are, tonight. Socks are socks three, in order tonight. three to one. Three out of four, ain't bad, is it? Three to one. When Billy Sharp and George Baldock was here with him, mm. I was the only one wearing socks. Two weeks I ago. had them all. Anyway, look. <laughs> 
at James Greg Seven or at oh, Alan Biggs, Biggs One. There, there yeah. you go. Yeah, there it is. Uh, tw tweet, tweet us your suggestions yeah. on that, and we'll. Can, we'll can, I, can I just say I've seen some off-script pieces to camera in my time. Yeah, I don't think I've seen anything quite like that. <laughs> yeah, it, was good, it? It, was, it was an impassioned <laughs> plea, wasn't it, that one? Do you mean to say you're not going to put a request no, in for original, me? Yeah. 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 You're not going to put a request in for me to join you at the England camp <laughs> in Nice? Blow it there. Blow it. That was your one shot. That was your it one was, shot. Yeah. Impassioned <laughs> plea to find a pub to watch well, Sunderland. We'll, we'll, we'll see. One, but it is. Look, I reckon, I reckon. See how many people get tweeting is, Alan? If yeah? you get no responses at all, then well, no I'm chance. Ditched. Yeah, OK. Um, <laughs> just give us, while I get my train of thought back, yeah, yeah, just give us, give us your round up. Yeah, tell, well, us, tell us what's going on. I mean, to be fair, this stage of the season, there's not actually a great deal going on. Oh, Sorry right. to disappoint. However, Thank you, there is always <laughs> stuff going on. So, um, But we were going to talk about last week, we forgot to mention the fact that when we had Billy Sharp and George Baldock in, yeah. we talked about the banner. Um, going out that was flown over Hillsborough on the final day of the season by Sheffield United fans. They crowdfunded, raised 780 quid. Wednesday fans said, well, that's not very good. You can put money to far better use. And they've raised a bit of money. Um, well, they have raised a lot of money this season. £5,000 from their quid a goal scheme that was set up by uh, Sheffield Wednesday fan Matt Brown. Um, so it was Owls fans do donated a pound for every goal. Of course, they scored 63 goals in the season. Lots of fans adds up to £5,000. Not bad at all. That was going to the Children's Hospital Charity and Western Park. And also for Sheffield Mind as well, um, after the banner, that raised over £4,000 as well. So that was pretty good from all the Sheffield Wednesday fans. And also, I've got to say as well, in fairness, for balance, Sheffield United fans, they exceeded that £780 mark to get the money in for the banner, and then the rest of the money that they raised for that also went to the Children's Hospital. So charitable bunch, our football fans in That's Sheffield. Good. So just a little nod to that one. I had a message from, Joe, uh, from Matt Brown, who you mentioned, just saying that people can still contribute to that yeah. uh, fund that's raised over £5,000 by going to their fundraising page which is uk.virginmoneygiving.com forward slash quit a goal one. Yeah. That's a bit of a mouthful, but anyway. Is, yeah. If you uh, type in quit a goal, Sheffield Wednesday, you'll be able to find it on, right, on the okay. internet. All right. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so they've done very well. Um, anyway, on to actually sporting matters on the field. Uh, we'll start off by talking about uh, cricket, because we don't really give cricket much coverage on here. Uh, talk about Yorkshire. Uh, not many Sheffielders involved in the Yorkshire side at the moment. Obviously, Joe oh. Root um, is a bit busy with England at the moment, preparing for a World <laughs> yeah. Cup. But Yorkshire look well on track to beat Kent at Canterbury. Kent have got seven wickets left. They need 350 runs on day four to win that one, which I don't think they're going to do. Uh, Sheffield Sharks, their season is over. They lost both legs to the London City Royals last weekend in the semi-final. So another good season, uh, but ultimately trophyless for the Sharks. Uh, but a good, good effort all round to just squeeze into those playoffs in the end, wasn't it? Uh, what about Works Up Town? We had Craig Denton in last week. Um, have you already touched on this in the first no, half? Of the well, program? only briefly. No? Only briefly. Yeah. Well, this will please you as well, won't it? This, you know, fantastic. 22 games in a row that they've won. That's not with any draws in between. They've not lost this calendar year. Oh. And they've obviously won the division by a country mile at Canter. Mm. And then they've also uh, won the League Cup final at the Keep Moat Stadium on Monday night. So that was incredible. I mean, you know, you're involved with works up Lance. And, and it's, it's phenomenal. Gone from strength to strength, aren't they? Uh, you kind of ran out of words to describe it, really, yeah. as to, in terms of what's happened. and just keep telling younger supporters that, you know, the chances are this just ain't ever going to happen again for the next 150 years. <laughs> because wh whatever level of football, 22 wins in a row is just... Yeah. It's outstanding, isn't it? It's just it? Yeah. amazing. Would you like to see one of the goals from the other night at the keep mode? Oh, go on then. Yeah, three, it was a 3-1 win against Liversidge, as you know. Mm -hmm. And you've got a, a free kick specialist called Steve Woolley. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many goals he scored from free kicks this season, but he scored a lot. And anyway, here's another peach, a gem, from the other night. Here we are. This is Steve Woolley. This is the opening goal of that uh, cup final. Just look oh. at that acute effort just inside the near post. That curl on the ball over the... Uh, that's that, nice, that. the wall there. Very and nice. uh, that set you, set you, on you on your way, 43rd minute. Yeah, he yeah. got a second, a second goal from almost an identical position um, early in the second half as well. Did which he? really set us on our way, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. 3-1 uh, the final score. Right. Fantastic. Um, so, the run, hopefully, now is parked for three months and then <laughs> next season, 
yeah, exactly. we see where we go. You just want to keep going, don't well, you? I think, I mean, what form. Craig, Craig Stun and all the players, I mean, it, it has been phenomenal, as, as, as we said. I, I, I don't think anybody wants the run to end because I think at the back of our minds, we know that once it ends, it's over, you know, yes. that there's, there's not going to be another run like this. So with every every game that comes along, we celebrate 20, we celebrate 21, we celebrate 22, but it's going to be 22 now for at least three months or so. Mm. Is, is there a book in it? Oh, there may be. Right. There may, maybe. The but cogs it, are wearing. You but can if see they that. keep, if they keep winning, you'll not be able to. Well, I think, out, I think, I think, I think there, <laughs> there may be a book in it already. I think, from a publishing perspective, I think the first challenge was to continue the run to win the league, mm -hmm. and then the second one was to continue the run until the end of the season, and the double was the, the cherry on the top. So, yeah. I think that, I think, I think, I think, they, I think there could be. Yeah, on top of your sandal indeed. I don't know when I'm going to write it, but I think there could be. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> well, Carla, um, what sort of a summer are you going to have in comparison to the hectic one that you had uh, a year ago? Are you going to have a bit more of a relaxed time this time, or does success bring extra pressure, <laughs> expectation um, for next season? No, I think we set our own expectations. We want to do better than we did this year. I think obviously it's going to be a quieter summer because we don't need 20 players. Um, however, we do need a number of players, and um, if we can keep the nucleus together and add a, add a few bit, bits of quality in and around them, and then we'll certainly try and achieve that next season. Um, for me, as soon as it finished on sun Saturday, I was on the phone Sunday. So you know, I want to try and get it get things tied up as early as possible, so then I can have a little bit of a break before pre-season. But at the minute, it's all all hands to the pump to make sure we can try and get some players over the line. Yeah, because I, I think there will be you know an expectation that you might be challenging next season. Does that frighten you? Or do you think it's unfair, or is it just something you embrace? Yeah, you embrace it. I think when you're you know when you're at a club like Sheffield United, they, uh, they want success. So, you know, I sat down with a board not long ago, um, a couple of weeks ago, and asked about expectations for next season. And, it, and you know, what it will be before we went seven wins on the bounce, by the way, it was after about three wins. Yeah. Um, it was to better our league position this year. All right, we finished strongly, so we've ended, ended up securing fifth. Um, but I don't want to finish any lower than fifth, and I definitely don't even want to finish fifth. Me being me, I want to go and try and push. Um, but you know, we've got to be realistic in what we've got. So um, the aim will be um, in-house and we've got to better this season, which is a top four finish next season. Mm. Big thing is facilities. You've yep. got those. I mean, you, you play at the um, Olympic Legacy Park, don't, don't yes. you, ordinarily. Um, there must be something at the back of your mind that would hope that, you know, at some stage in the future, there's the support to, to play at, at Bramall Lane itself. More often, I mean, you have done on a couple of occasions. You played the last game of the season, didn't you? Yeah. The lane. I'm going to throw it out there and say no, actually. No. You'd rather um, not, no? Listen, it's a luxury. Um, yeah. But what we don't want to do is, is um, you know, one thing the club's done well is, is they've, they've massively backed it, but they want the women to, to be the women's team. Yeah. Now, with that, Kevin's, um, you know, obviously got Olympic Legacy Park, which is great. Yeah. And for us, potentially, the year after next to be the only team in England with our own stadium is unbelievable. Um, so for me, it's, yeah, it's a luxury to play at Bramwell Lane. Um, but let's start getting our fan base used to OLP. The girls love it there. Um, and the current fans love it there. And um, no, for me, I think it's all about Olympic Legacy Park and where we're going to be really for the next sort of 10, 20 years. And also, it keeps that atmosphere in as well, doesn't it? You know, you go in there and because it's not as big as the lane, the spectators yeah. make it feel fuller and yeah. that creates an atmosphere. But we had um, we had a meeting actually with Kevin McCabe and and some others, and we discussed the Man United game. Do we play Manchester United at Bramwell Lane? So everybody around the table, yeah, yeah, big crowd, let's get them in. I said no, no, let's get them to OLP, pack out OLP, and the atmosphere will be electric, yeah, yeah, nice yeah. and tight. Um, you know, you don't want to play Manchester United on a big pitch. For one, they'll <laughs> tear us apart. <laughs> You know, it's going to be a difficult night. It makes perfect sense to me that. So what no, you're saying. we and we played Manchester United at home. Had 1,200 there, and it was loud, very yeah, loud, yeah, yeah. and it was a great occasion, really good occasion. 1,200 people in Bramall Lane will get lost. Yeah, correct. So, it would, um, yeah. You know, you've got to be honest yeah. about these things. And so yeah. I, lo I love OLP, and I think it's it's great that we have our own stadium. Yeah. So um, mm. I'm very pro there, and. Uh, Fantastic. 
At the risk of spoiling things, VAR then. Um, controversial subject. Uh, spiritually, I've always been against it, I suppose because I'm of an age, a bit of a traditionalist. So the heart in me is a bit broken at the moment, but the head says, look, don't swim against the tide, it's here. You've dealt with it in tournaments. Mm. What do you make of it, and do you think uh, it's going to become a benefit to the game? Or is it a benefit to the game? Okay. Big question. What do I make of it? It's uh, given me employment for the last two summers. Um, <laughs> that's the first thing I should say. Um, <sighs> Honestly, hand on heart, I'm a traditionalist. So I, me. I, 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 I'd rather not have it, but that's not going to happen. Yeah. And so we've we've got to uh, we've got to go with it. I think my feeling, the, the overall feeling that I have, is that it doesn't matter if there are a hundred cameras or a hundred VAR officials. It, it will come down to one person's opinion at the end of the day and that is what happened in the world cup final last summer the biggest match on the planet and ultimately it came down to one man's decision to award to award a penalty or not to award a penalty um now i think if 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 i was to answer the question more fully i would say that more decisions are going to be correct now and and yes every now and again there's still going to be a mistake or something that's open to debate or controversial but i think that over a 90 minutes of a, of a football match more decisions will be will be found to be correct or justice will have been served i dare say with var but there's different levels to it aren't they and and i mean i'm stretching it out now you know what happened in the fa cup this season I wasn't in agreement with. Mm. You know, that uh, Millwall Everton match would have been a different result <laughs> yeah. had, uh, had um, Millwall have the facility to show VAR, and they well, didn't. And so you had a competition, yeah. you know, so. It was a flawed competition. So once, once yeah. we get down to, you know, Women's Championship or Northern Premier League and, and what have you, you know, where does it, where does it sit? Where, where, where do you sit on it then, Carla? In the women's game? Yeah. The officiating's not good enough. So. In the fisher, in, in so, the so it's going to improve things for you then, <laughs> yeah. or is it? A bit, you're only as well, good as you're for anything that'd improve it, aren't, wouldn't you? You know. Absolutely, yeah. Listen, I um, I make no secret. I think the officiating in the women's game is absolutely awful, yeah. Um, yeah. and that's me being honest. So if you've got other officials who officiate your games and are substandard in your view behind the VAR, they're going to be poor. But VARs as well. But VARs are more black and white, though, isn't it? You I don't know? think VAR will come into the women's game at championship level for a long time. No, if no, I'm no. being honest, do I think it would help? Yeah, um, but then to be honest, the FA could help it by um, delivering better officials at that level. You know, the shout and scream about um, the wanting to have the WSL in the championship as as pro or semi-pro. They don't back it up with the officials. Yeah. Should should they be farming ex-players more than they are? I'm talking about ex-players in both the men's and the women's game. They do, there's always the complaint that it takes too long to, to get qualified and that it's not an attractive career because of that. Maybe. Um, I just think there are good enough officials out there. Use them. But, yeah. you know, sometimes it comes down to what... Um, what they, you know, what the FA want to put into it. Yeah. I was going to say, right, so on Alan's question there, he's made about, um, you know, using ex-pros as the referees. Would, I can't, you know, as a sort of a former player yourself, right, would you ever think, I know I'm going to be a ref? You wouldn't, would you? I mean, I, I, I don't want to speak for every single professional footballer, but... The backgrounds are not important. It's are they good enough for the job? Correct, exactly. And it's two different skill sets as yeah. well, isn't it? And the problem we have in the championship is we week in, week out get people that have never even officiated at that level. Yeah. And a lot we were discussing before, they wouldn't even be good enough for conference or national league north and south. Really? I mean, that's the thing. I, I didn't know this. No. So, I, so I asked Carla before. I said, you know, is that really the case? No. Carla said no. That you know they wouldn't be refereeing in the conference north. You know. Oh. Which is it bad, you know, when it's meant to be the second tier. So where are your referees 
coming from, by and large? You're saying they're underqualified. <laughs> Carla doesn't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I was saying before, we've had to put in, when we put in reports about refs, we've started putting footage with it just to, I mean, I showed you some footage before <laughs> yeah, of did, one yeah. that I um, got in trouble actually for my, my tweets and I, I, I tried to back it up with the footage. Yeah. And um, I just think that the players at this level deserve more. They give everything, they deserve more. Mm. Okay, well, for, is, is that a view that's shared? You'll obviously talk to other managers and coaches. Uh, and is that a view that's commonly shared? Phil Neville said it, hasn't he, how many times? He's, uh, he's always talking about it, and that's the top. Yeah, going, yeah, yeah. going back to your question, James, I mean, do, do we actually think it would make that much difference? What? I mean, if the ex pro I mean, ex -pro doing it. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I've you know, I've been listening to a couple of podcasts and stuff recently where they've discussed this exact topic, mm. and they've had ex-pros on, and they say, having been a player, for me then to be a referee, you know, for, on a personal level, I'd just get hammered because you know everyone would be, yeah. you know, you're a sellout and all. It'd be a nightmare for the first person to do it. I think. Well, if, it's you know, been done. It's been yeah, done. Yeah, Steve but, Baines was a, a centre half. Uh, yeah, he did but it. exactly. But, but I, I think he was uh, disillusioned because of his lack of progress or whatever. But, so but there's not going to be. What I'm saying is, he's not going to get a Frank Lampard or, a, or a, so for example, <laughs> oh, management or standing in the middle getting abused yeah. every week. You know, they're not they're not going to swap one for the other. But there's like, an awful you know, lot of players just that not. just drift out of the game and, and managers do as well they get beaten up and spat out <coughs> I, th spat I think the out. more that, that VAR comes into effect as well I think football keeps changing doesn't it? it's fluid and you see that with tactics and stuff and, and uh, I don't know what the statistics were but in the World Cup last year there were a lot of penalties you know and it crossed my mind that the value of penalty takers and, I, and I'm not talking yeah, yeah, yeah. about your strikers I'm talking about you're too young to remember, and you are as well. But Phil Neal. You think? Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's nice. You, you yeah. remember Phil Neal? Yeah. Okay. So, so players like that yeah, who could give you, who yeah. could, who <laughs> could, <laughs> um, could give you 12, 15 goals a season. Yeah. And the, and the importance of, of of that type of player who can supply goals from the penalty spot. Peter Story at Arsenal too. Loads of goals from penalties. John McPhail, Sheffield John United, McPhail. and Sunderland. Yeah. And Sunderland, yeah. 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 <laughs> Love the red and white stripes. We were, yeah. Yeah. Have you yeah. found the pub yet, by the way? No, I, not on mine. <laughs> have, you, have, you, have, you, have you on yours? Sure, well, they might have tweeted me. They might have we'll, tweeted me. We'll, 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 we'll find We'll find, we'll we'll find, find a pub. <laughs> um, well, it remains for me. Well, we've got a minute and a half left. Um, who's going to win the uh, Women's World Cup? Who's going to win the Women's World Cup? Who's going to win the Women's World Cup? USA for me. They're the holders, so. I'd like um, to say England, but I'm going to go England or Japan. Okay. Ooh, um, okay. I've got to say England. He's got to say yeah, England. Yeah, well, yeah, well, you do, yeah. <laughs> but working with England. The last one, my tickets have been revoked, yeah. yeah. And I hope I'm right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, chance. I mean, we all hope England do, don't we? You it's know. the best chance, I think. Yeah. yeah, I think it is. And they've got the whole sort of country behind them, haven't they? There'll be a lot of support, I'd imagine. People going on their holidays in France and people wanting to go over yeah. it's not too far away. And it's a great, it's brilliant. On the BBC, obviously. They'll have massive so support. It's going to be summer. fantastic. Yeah. It'll be a fiesta of football, shouldn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, down in the south of France there with, uh, with Lance. It doesn't look like I've got a gig. To, to join him. Definitely uh, not after your show. Fine as a pub. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Carla. Uh, <laughs> and, you. and you as well. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, that's Harley for joining us. And thank you <laughs> as well for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, and if you've missed, as ever, it'll be repeated at 11 pm here on Sheffield Live TV and it'll be on my YouTube channel as well. I don't know whether there's going to be a show next week. It's a bit odd this time of year and more difficult to get guests because they're all on holiday. Mm. We'll see what we can do. We may be back here next week, if not the week after. Thanks, James, as well. Cheers, we'll see you. Bye-bye.